The Trump Davidians. That is how Trump ally Steve Bannon sums up a movement that has swallowed whole one of our nation's two major political parties. A movement led by an ex-president currently facing 91 felony counts and on a third run for the White House on a platform of damaging democracy. That quote is from Jonathan Carl's brand new book, Tired of Winning, Donald Trump and the End of the Grand Old Party. It reveals this dramatic collision of efforts to hold the ex-president accountable for his alleged crimes and misdeeds, and a candidate who has no hesitation stoking the fires of right-wing extremism and sees winning the presidency as the only way to get out of his legal troubles. In an essay in The Atlantic that is adapted from his brand new book, John Carl writes this about the decision by the Trump campaign to hold its very first rally in Waco, Texas, the site of a standoff between far-right extremists and the FBI that ended in dozens of deaths. Quote, shortly after the rally was announced, I asked Steve Bannon, who had served as the CEO of Trump's 2016 campaign and had once again emerged as one of Trump's most important advisors, why the former president would go to Waco for his big campaign reboot. He wasn't coy. Quote, we're the Trump Davidians, he told me with a laugh. As for Trump's comments at that speech, John Carl writes this, quote, this was not a campaign speech in any traditional sense. Trump echoed the themes of paranoia and foreboding that grew out of the Waco massacre. Quote, as far as the eye can see, the abuses of power that we're currently witnessing at all levels of government will go down as among the most shameful, corrupt, and depraved chapters in all of American history, Trump said. The central message of the Trump candidacy was now geared around fending off the criminal cases brought by Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg, Special Counsel Jack Smith, and Fulton County DA Fonnie Willis. Once again, John Carl writing in The Atlantic, quote, but they weren't coming after Trump's law-abiding supporters. They were coming after Trump. Decades earlier, the presidential candidate, Bill Clinton, told voters that he felt their pain. Trump was now doing the reverse, trying to persuade his supporters to feel his pain as if it were their own. It is all part of a, quote, campaign of vengeance and martyrdom, Carl, John Carl writes. Quote, he will continue to talk about what is at stake in the election in apocalyptic terms. Quote, the final battle, knowing how high the stakes are for him personally. He can win and retake the White House, or he can lose and go to prison. Donald Trump's run for the presidency built around an assault on the rule of law in these United States is where we begin today with some of our favorite reporters and friends. The author of that great excerpt we just read from that great new book, John Carl, is here with us. He's chief Washington correspondent for ABC News and already a best-selling author. The upcoming book, Tired of Winning, Donald Trump and the End of the Grand Old Party, is out this month. We're also joined by the former lead investigator for the January 6th Select Committee, Tim Hafey. So I, I can't get past the Trump Davidians, John Carl. Um, say more. Uh, first of all, uh, it just blew me away to hear it. I, I immediately, when I saw that that first rally, this wasn't any rally, this was the kickoff rally. This was the beginning of his 2024 uh, presidential campaign, the first rally of that campaign. And to go to Waco, I mean, he didn't go to a battleground state. He didn't go to Iowa. He didn't go to New Hampshire. He didn't go to South Carolina. Uh, he didn't go uh, to, a, to, to, to any place that made sense in terms of the political calendar or the political map. He went to Texas. And he didn't go anywhere in Texas. He went to Waco. And it was almost exactly 30 years after the Branch Davidian uh, disaster. Uh, I had actually written a book um, in uh, <laughs> a thousand years ago, it seems like, but long, not long after that, uh, called The Right to Bear Arms, The Rise of America's Militias. And the, the front page of the cover of that book had a photo of the inferno in Waco. And I wrote about how that disastrous federal late raid had inspired that armed militia, right-wing militia movement. Um, so to hear it again and to see the campaign themes almost exactly as they were back in the 1990s when Timothy McVeigh used the Waco massacre, which was clearly a, a total screw up for the federal government, um, to use that as a rallying cry to carry out the, the single deadliest domestic attack, terrorist attack in American history uh, in, uh, in Oklahoma City. Um, so to hear an advisor, a very important advisor, 
to the leading Republican presidential candidate invoke the Waco massacre as a rallying cry now for a presidential campaign, uh, to me, uh, was just, I, I mean, I want to say frightening. I don't know what, I mean, it, you know, was, um, but, but it, it so clearly summarized the message as you actually read what Trump was saying or listen to what Trump was saying at that speech. And I feel like in the moment, too many of us, not you, but too many of us, I'll, I'll say me, get stuck in the old frame of Trump so ignorant of our own country's history. Maybe it's a coincidence. And the coverage wasn't as sharp and probing as what your book reveals. And obviously, writing a book is a different exercise. And, and there was a lot of analysis of the place. But to have Steve Bannon acknowledge that in his mind, the movement is the Trump Davidians feels new. Yeah, and and look, uh, the, the the truth is that Trump had that rally. The rally itself got coverage, but we we one of the key things about that rally, you don't even need Steve Bannon uh, to to make it crystal clear for you. The the, the rally started with Trump on stage silently, uh, listening as the national anthem was played a recording done by the so-called J6 choir uh, the uh, some of the some of the, some of the prisoners uh, who were awaiting sentence in a DC jail for their role in the January 6th attack who had uh, you know ha had sung over over the uh, uh, over the phones at the at the uh, at that DC prison the national anthem and while they played that out uh, literally on the screen surrounding the the, the stage, you saw scenes from the January 6th attack on the Capitol play out. This was the kickoff rally for a presidential campaign. But again, it's kind of covered. Here we have, you know, Trump's doing the first rally. Here's what he said. I, I don't think that there was anywhere near enough attention as to the symbolism of the, pl of the place, the symbolism of the way he started that, uh, that rally off, and then what he actually said which was all about retribution and revenge and doesn't read all that different from what I was listening to as I was writing about those right-wing militia groups, you know, nearly 30 years earlier. Well, and, and let's press on this because you write this, quote, when I spoke with Bannon a few days later, he wouldn't stop touting Trump's performance, referring to it as his come retribution speech. What I didn't realize was that come retribution, according to some Civil War historians, served as the code words for the Confederate Secret Service's plot to take hostage and eventually assassinate President Abraham Lincoln. Quote, the use of the key phrase come retribution suggests that the Confederate government had made a bitter decision to repay some of the misery that had been inflicted on the South. William A. Tidwell, James O. Hall, David Winfred Gady wrote in the 1988 book, Come Retribution, the Confederate Secret Service and the Assassination of Lincoln. Quote, bitterness may well have been directed toward persons held to be particularly responsible for that misery. And Abraham Lincoln certainly headed the list. Bannon actually recommended that I read that book, erasing any doubt that he was intentionally using the Confederate code words to describe Trump's speech. I mean, does this cross a line? I mean, I mean, it's just mind blowing. But uh, Steve Bannon now um, wanted me to be sure uh, that I gave the full what he called the predicate uh, for that Confederate plot, which is uh, that the Confederate Secret Service was directly responding, again, in that, all written in that book, the 1988 book, uh, was, was, was a direct response to an order that Abraham Lincoln had, had given uh, for a mission to try to assassinate Jefferson Davis and the other Confederate leaders. So Bannon is saying he's not uh, uh, saying that it's about the, the, uh, the cause of the Confederacy or even the war itself, but it's direct retribution uh, for, for an attempted uh, assassination of the Confederate leaders. Anyway, it's just bizarre that we're talking about a speech by a presidential candidate in 2023 as reflective of a something that the Confederacy was doing to try to kidnap 
and assassinate Abraham Lincoln. I mean, look, Trump wasn't calling for political assassination, but he was calling for the annihilation of his enemies, which is what Bannon is talking about. The annihilation, not through violence, he'll say, but through other means, uh, political means, but the full and total annihilation of his enemies, which he defines not simply as, as his political opponents, but, you know, the so-called deep state, the people that are, uh, uh, you know, going after him, the, the FBI, the Justice Department, uh, the intelligence agencies, uh, that, that this is, you know, a full-on effort to annihilate Trump's enemies. I mean, the line, though, from Waco to McVeigh is a direct one. And the person who prosecuted yes. the Oklahoma City domestic terror attack is Merrick Garland. Um, you know, if these guys yes. have retribution invoking the Confederacy, clearly they have Waco invoking something very direct, don't you think? And yeah, yes, and and I elsewhere in the book, and I know you and I will have a chance to the the, the book is out in about uh, eleven days or so, and 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 there's a lot more in there. This excerpt in the Atlantic is from the first chapter, really setting up uh, the themes. But there is another. Uh, there is something else uh, that comes a little bit later, which is I, I ask, and again with Bannon, I ask him, aren't you concerned? I mean, as a human being, aren't you worried about the prospects of violence? Um, and his answer to me was no, because we are going to win.